Inside his dressing room, Steve Martin sits in front of a lighted mirror playing the piano. Martin Short sits next to him. Do you want to watch the SAG Awards with me? No. What's wrong? You've been acting odd all day. I don't want to be friends anymore. What? But we've been best friends, well, pretend show business friends for years. There's no one I feel fake closer to. Just move your feckin' chair away. Move the feckin' chair. Move it all the way out of the feckin' frame. Out of the frame? Feck off! Look, if you keep bothering me, I'm gonna cut off all my feckin' fingers. But if you cut off your fingers, then you wouldn't be able to play the banjo anymore. Selena Gomez enters. Hey guys, what's up? Steve doesn't want to be my friend, and he's threatening to cut off his feckin' fingers. So, no more banjo? Aw. What's wrong, Steve? Steve hands Selena a piece of paper. She reads. SAG Awards Male Actor in Comedy. Oh, you're both nominated in the same category. We're what? Martin lunges. Oh, cut off more than your feckin' fingers, you pasty face freak! Hey, guys, guys, it's okay. You both obviously are gonna lose. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Based on our performances, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Buddy, I'm sorry. Aww. I didn't mean to call you pasty face. You did? No, we sure. Hey, guys, look, the feckin' show is starting. <gasps> the camera sweeps past a wall of portraits of Steve Martin. from the Fairmont Century Plaza Hotel in Los Angeles, California. It's the 29th annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Join us as the acting community honors the year's greatest performances in film and television. When I was five years old, I was watching television with my grandmother and I saw the most gorgeous black woman I had ever seen in my little five years of living. She had on a long red dress and her eyelashes looked like butterflies. I said, Grandmama, who is that? She said, baby, that's Lola Falana. <laughs> in that moment, my destiny was stamped on the canvas of my imagination. I wanted to be black, fabulous, and on TV. I ran and got two phone books and stacked them together because that was my stage. And my first talent was to turn around in a circle and let my family get a load of me. I am Nisi Nash Bex, and baby, I'm an actor. <laughs> When I turned 52, I was tossed to the verbal emotional whirlwind that was Saul Goodman, AKA Jimmy McGill, AKA Gene Takovic. And after six years of toughing it out, I think I can finally say proudly and with confidence, I'm Bob Odenkirk and I'm... Line! <laughs> what? Bob Wars. How does it end? You what? Uh, you're an actor. Bob wears a navy blazer with black lapels. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis wears a low-cut red gown with long sleeves. She smiles and laughs as the audience applauds for her. I got my SAG card when I was 19 years old, when I signed a seven-year contract to Universal Studios and starred in an ABC TV series called Operation Petticoat, which was based on a movie that my father, Tony Curtis, Nepo baby, <laughs> starred in. <clears throat> now, I was fired from that TV show <laughs> a year later, and I thought my life was over. But the good news is that if I hadn't been fired from Operation Petticoat, <laughs> I would have never had the opportunity to audition for a little tiny, no budget horror movie called Halloween, which changed my life. My name is Jamie Lee Curtis, and I am proudly an actor. She wears her short gray hair cropped and wears rhinestone earrings. I don't know if I thought she could wear that. I felt like that was good. I don't think you should do Chanel James and Quinta Bronson look at the menu. Oh, sorry, I haven't looked at the menu yet. I need like two minutes. No, girl, that's the, um, this is not, that's not the waiter, it's the camera. We up. 
<clears throat> this ain't one of them kiss cams, is it? No, shit. <laughs> it's the Iron Man thing I told you about. When did you tell me about that? I definitely put it in my calendar to tell you about it, and I forgot to say it. So when are we doing it? It's right now, because it's live, because Jamie Lee, she just did. You heard hers? The story. Quincy Marie Brunson. Is that your middle name? No. Marie? No, it's Janelle. Anyway, okay. Um, so, well, you go ahead if you got something prepared, because I'm, I'm going to. No, no, you go ahead, because um, you go ahead. When she I mouths, I got nothing. Business, I was haunted by a reoccurring stress dream where I was suddenly on TV with every star in Hollywood watching me, <laughs> and I had nothing prepared to say. Tonight, thanks to the help of my friends, that dream has come true. My name is Janelle James, and I am an actor. <laughs> that was good. That was good, girl. Oh, and my name is Quinta Brunson, and I am an actor. Let's start the show. Janelle and Quinta stand up and walk to the stage. In a comedy series tonight. Please welcome Quinta Brunson and Janelle James. Quinta wears a strapless dress where the bodice looks like a clamshell with white sequins. And Janelle James wears a black dress with a lace overlay. Hey! Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the 29th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Oh my goodness, we need to get serious for a minute. Are you kidding? No, I'm serious. This is our first time at the SAG Awards and it's just been so incredible being nominated and being part of this mind-blowing room on this very special night. That's true. We are so grateful to be here. It's a wild experience walking up on the stage and going, look, Sally Field, you know, <laughs> Zendaya, yeah, yeah. Elvis. Oh, no, girl. His name is Austin Butler. <laughs> nah, I saw the movie. That, that, that dude is Elvis. It's, he's... <laughs> she twists her hips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Him. okay. <laughs> You're right. It's inspiration everywhere you look. How about the amazing Jennifer Coolidge? Hey! Jennifer? <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge wears her soft blonde waves around her shoulders. Jennifer! Hey! Hey! Talk for two minutes one time, so that's my best friend. Hey, so, girl. You know, hey. Um, Jennifer, I am almost through season two of The White Lotus. And let me tell you something. I cannot wait to see what you do in season three. Like, for real, I just, it's your character and the way you develop, that's Yeah, really yeah, like. me too. Um, the legendary Viola Davis is here. <laughs> Fresh from a Grammy win, and now an EGOT. Yes, and you know what? She's won the SAG Award six times. So I feel like we need to put an S up there. In fact, put a letter for every award Viola has won because she's more than an EGOT. Yeah. She's a, she's got all, all of them things, all of them, <laughs> all of them shit. On screen, the words, she's got them all yes. appears. While we're talking about excellence, let's take a look at some highlights from tonight's nominated performances. You cannot start without me. Anyway! I always want to be part of something bigger. We live in a fast world. She's trapped in delusion. Find out who we'll be making a deal with after this next break. Watch this. Isn't this fun? Quick clips from movies and TV from the past year appear on screen. How you feeling? You wish I was different! So do I! Kips appear from The Dropout, Barry, Ozark, and The Bandumans. It'll tear you in two. That is no man's land, and that's where we're heading. Clips appear from The Bear and the Banshee of Inna Sharon. So dramatic. Clips appear from The Woman King, Stranger Things, Hacks, and Wednesday. Sit somewhere else. I used to think you were the nicest of them. Okay. It looks like we're in for a fight. Clips appear from The Boys and Dead to Me. We've got to innovate. We've got to inspire. Female warriors with shaved heads line up and leap from a cliff side by side. Are you with us? Evelyn from Everything Everywhere All at Once flies backwards in an office chair, then appears in a gown in a limo. A creature from Avatar shoots an arrow. I live this game. I think I earned the right to be hurt. Who are you? Can you say it again? Who are any of you? It is a major breakthrough. We do the best we can. Please welcome Zendaya and Paul Meskel. 
Zendaya wears a strapless gown with a cutout in her abdomen with pink silk and a black bodice. There are so many exciting firsts in an actor's life, like a first audition or a first speaking part, even on every job, the first table read or that butterfly-filled first day on set. And once your work is done and it's finally shown for the first time, there's a chance, if it's truly exceptional, that you will be nominated for this first, first SAG Award of the night. Here are the five outstanding nominees for female actor in a television movie or limited series. Emily Blunt. The English. Some ways. He was the parent. Showed me the way. So now I know how to follow. She smiles in the audience at her table. She brings her hands to her heart. Justine, George and Tammy. Now I'm here. So I hope that uh, says something for me. Jessica wears her long red hair with a center part. Julia Gardner, inventing Anna. I think my dad always expected me to fail. All men underestimate women, even the one who's supposed to love us. Julia wears a rhinestone netted dress. Nash Betts, Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Wait, wait you're not even going to ask me the apartment number? Ma'am. I said we'd send somebody. Y'all always say you're gonna send somebody and nobody ever shows. Nisi smiles from her table. Amanda Seyfried, the dropout. She carries a box. And you're a mediocre software engineer. He grabs the box and throws it down. Okay, bye. <laughs> Amanda grins from the audience. And the actor goes to Jessica, Jessica Chastain. <laughs> Jessica gasps and holds her hands up. She gets up from the table. She wears an asymmetrical fuchsia floor length gown that gathers at the sides. Her earrings are long and dangly and a man helps her up the stairs in her dress. She stumbles at the top step and smiles and lifts her gown up. She does a quick walk over to the podium. Zendaya hands her this award. Thank you so much. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you to the Screen Actors Guild Awards. I just have to say, recognize my fellow nominees, Amanda, Emily, Julia, Nisi. I have seen all of your performances, and I am in awe of you and your talent. Uh, I, yes, because they're amazing. Um, I need to thank Kai's and Chris and Keith and everyone at Showtime because the only reason I'm up here is they convince people to watch the show and I'm so grateful to them. My producing partner, Kelly Carmichael, Abe Sylvia, our showrunner, David Glasser, uh, Andrew Lazar, Josh Brolin, um, John Hillcoat. The show exists because of your talent and I am so grateful to you. I share this with Michael Shannon who I believe is one of our greatest working actors. And it was a dream collaboration from day one, and I wouldn't have gotten to day two without his support. And I'm doing a show right now in New York. I'm doing A Doll's House. There's my plug, if uh, anyone wants to come see it. And every day after the show, I get the opportunity to meet people at the stage door. And I get to meet a lot of actors who tell me their stories. And it reminds me of when I was in college, Philip Seymour Hoffman came to speak to my class. And he told us uh, all of his frustrating stories about auditions, and he encouraged us to keep going even when we felt like no one was watching us. And at the end of the talk, he said, I look forward to working with each of you. And it really shocked me because it was like he brought it into being. And a few years later, it came true, and I had the opportunity to do a play with him. And it, I'm telling this story now because it reminds me of how powerful our mind is and that we are what our thoughts create. So I just want to tell everyone who might be struggling at home, to all the actors that I get to meet, keep going, you're one job away. I look forward to working with you. I'll see you on set. And I love you, thank you so much. 
In the audience, Julia Garner applauds. She wears a red metallic dress. And now, Stephanie Hsu, Ki Hui Kwan, and Michelle Yeoh. Stephanie wears a dress with a short front and a long train in the back. It's pink and red. Michelle wears a black strapless dress. Tonight's first nominee for cast in a motion picture is the story of a mother fighting through infinite universes to save her daughter and break a generational cycle. It is a story about choosing love, however imperfect, finding each other as a family over and over again. And no matter what universe you find yourself in, always follow your joy. This is everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> Mrs. Wang, are you with us? Evelyn wears a Bluetooth earpiece and launches backwards in an office chair. He's waiting in the wings. The universe he speaks of senseless things. is so much He's bigger. Scripted. Evelyn and Joy face off through different timelines. There is no way I am the Evelyn you are looking for. Every rejection, every disappointment. Here. Googly eyes appear on a rock. Give me this moment. The title appears, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Please welcome Jenna Ortega and Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza wears a bronze sequin dress with a halter and crisscross across her chest, a cutout in the center. They stare out into the audience without emotion on their face. I don't know why they paired us up together. Yeah. <laughs> I know, we have nothing in common. We should find the people who did this. And curse their families and watch as misfortune, misfortune follows their bloodline, bloodline for the next seven, seven generations. generations. Okay, I see it now. Here are the nominees for a male actor in a television movie or limited series. Steve Carell, The Patient. Beth is dead, Ezra hates me, and I've been kidnapped by a serial killer, so. He shrugs. Taryn Edgerton, Blackbird. You call off the dogs for me. Uh, why would I do that, Jim? So I know you can. Karen wears a white tuxedo. Sam Elliott, 1883. I'm taking my wife to the ocean. And I'm gonna sit on the beach and let her see it. Sam has uh, his iconic gray mustache. Paul Walter Hauser, Blackbird. He didn't fold the clothes, did he? No. No. Because he didn't break the zipper. And he didn't feel bad about it, and that's why I folded the clothes. Paul eats a hamburger in the audience. Evan Peters, Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. And the stuff that I've done is I, uh... I don't know. I think I should tell you about it. Evan wears a black tuxedo with a black bow tie. And the actor goes to Sam Elliott. Oh my God. Sam shakes the hand of the man sitting next to him, Don Cheadle, and makes his way to the stage. He has gray hair that goes to his shoulders. He reaches inside his tuxedo jacket and takes out glasses. Aubrey hugs him. She hands him the award. He gives Jenna a kiss on the cheek. Oh. He reaches in his coat um. again. <laughs> I wonder if anybody else is gonna read anything tonight. He pulls out a piece of paper. 
I do this because I didn't expect to be up here. And I've got 43 minutes to say, seconds to say this in. <laughs> and I've already wasted a half of that. He puts on his glasses. What can I say in 45 seconds? <laughs> After just receiving the most meaningful acknowledgement of my 55 year career. from a group of my peers, many of whom I don't even know, <laughs> or know only from afar as a fan who respects their work. Not time to say no. But I can say thank you, and I can tell you that I'm honored and grateful to be in your company, whether you're in this audience or watching at home. After seeing the work of my fellow nominees, I'm not even sure I should be standing up here. And I'm sure I'll get over that. <laughs> I'm going to treasure this guy, this gal, because it comes from all of you, my brothers and sisters from SAG AFTRA. I'll treasure it as a constant reminder of 1883 and what a gift it was to all of us on both sides of the camera. To my incredible castmates, there's a piece of this for all of you, not only for who you are, but for your beautiful work that helped me find the way. I love you all for that. Thank you, Taylor Sheridan, for your brilliant script. And David Glasser and everyone else at 101. Thank you to Paramount. Thank you to my team, David, Laura, and Becca. And thank you to my wife, my beautiful Catherine, my partner through thick and thin, and the mother of our beautiful daughter. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. He holds up the award and shakes it. In the audience, the cast of the White Lotus gather and chat. And the actor goes to Leonardo DiCaprio. Jennifer Aniston. Aniston. Brad Pitt. Michael Keaton. I want to say the word. I'm so glad I got this because now I can get this. Sean Hayes reveals abs drawn on his torso. They're just gonna go right through here and it's gonna be just a six pack in like four days, they said. Yeah, so thanks to have this happen on top of... Betty White fondles the award. And Sally, I'm very lonely up here without you. This is um, half yours, the penis part. You know, it's hard to believe in a town with this much plastic surgery that you can even give out a SAG award. I don't feel at all saggy. I feel quite perky, actually, <laughs> winning this, after all. SAG after Members, I mean, I've been, you know, been doing this 22 years. We know what this thing is we get to do and when it works and when it doesn't work so well. I've had so many crappy jobs in my life. People yelling at you, Cranston, move faster, work harder. And the only thing that got me through is imagining, dreaming that one day I could actually make a living as an actor. And that's what got me through. Thank God. I feel so lucky to be a member of this family of storytellers. And to be in a room with all of you amazing human beings. These actresses and so many more are proving that we are potent and powerful. This story is about what happens when we put our differences yes. aside. To be young, gifted, and black, we all know what it's like to be told that there is not a place for you to be featured. We know what it's like to be the tail and not the head. We know what it's like to be beneath and not above. We 1983 Midwesters will repel bullies. 
We will shelter freaks and outcasts, those who have no home. We will get past the lies. And when we are at a loss amidst the hypocrisy and the casual violence of certain individuals and institutions, we will, as per Chief Jim Hopper, punch some people in the face when they seek to destroy the meat and the disenfranchised and the marginalized. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you and good night. Audio description presented by Tide. The audience. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The audience mills about circular tables in the audience. Please welcome Amy Poehler and Adam Scott. Amy wears a floor length off, the sho off one shoulder dress. Adam Scott wears a burgundy blazer. All right, everybody take your seats. You know, I just, before we start, I just wanna say that I am, I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, well, it's pretty hard to tell, Adam. You're on a hit drama, so you're very dramatic now. Amy, how dare you? I have an idea. Why don't you go smoke cigarettes and wear leather jackets with all the drama people? You know what? <laughs> Maybe I will, because it's impossible to get a real moment from any of you comedy types. Wow, that hurts. You know what? What? Your mother's butt. See? Do you see? And the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a female actor in a comedy series are. Oh, well, that's convenient. Christina Applegate, Dead to Me. Hit us. What? Mm -hmm. And we slept together, which was good. Which is bad, because now he's upstairs fixing our leaky rattle. In the audience, Christina blows a kiss. Rachel Brosnahan, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I am looking for a bar where women like me can drink with other women, like me. Or just women in general. They don't have to be like me. They just You're have to a be... cop. What? No, I'm not a cop. This is Dior. Quinta Brunson, Abbott Elementary. There's nothing wrong with the gifted program itself. We just need to organize it better so that the regular kids, ooh, uh, the ungifted kids, mm, mm -hmm. the regifted kids. Let's lift up the other kids. Yes, that. Quinta smiles with her red lipstick in the audience. Jenna Ortega, Wednesday. Not above breaking a few fingers. The fact that they thought I wouldn't find out just proves how much they underestimate me. Thing gesticulates. Oh, Thing, you poor, naive appendage. Jenna leans on the table. Jean Smart, hacks. These are just artificial rules you make up for yourself. You should be writing jokes for me. I mean, you speak lesbian, right? Because you're half. Deborah. And the actor goes to Gene Smart. Pass. In the audience, Christina pumps her fists in the air. Um, so, uh, thank you. Amy takes. Gene Smart could not be with us this evening, but to accept her award on her behalf is her friend, Chris oh. McDonald. Chris holds up the award. Hello, everyone. I get to work with Gene Smart. I'm a lucky guy. Um, she couldn't be here tonight. I'm going to read her little message to you all. Uh, I'm so sorry I can't be with you tonight. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my brilliant Hacks cast. I'd like to first acknowledge my fellow nominees, because you rock, all your work was brilliant. Uh, I'd like to thank my cast and crew, HBO, Universal, my representatives, and tonight especially, I'd like to honor all of the guest stars that appeared in season two, whether it was one scene or one line. I think we all know how hard a job that is. You have all made our show richer, funnier, more real, and I can't thank you enough for that. I'd also like to thank <laughs> our guest stars who were on a little longer. Susie Essman. Yes, Javon Sawyer. 
Yes, Ming Nam Wen. <laughs> Polly Draper, Martha Kelly, and others I know I'm leaving out. Me, Seth. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so, uh, you are, were all phenomenal, and uh, I truly appreciate you. Lastly, Connor and Forrest, that's her boys, you are everything, my everything, and I love you so much. All my love, Gene. Congratulations, Gene Smart. He holds up the award and pumps it in the air. The cast of Hacks applaud from the and table. now, Michelle Williams, Paul Dano, and Gabriel LaBelle. Michelle wears a charcoal floor-length gown with a black velvet bow at the center of her chest, and it creates straps across her shoulders. Tonight's next nominee for Cast in a Motion Picture is a deeply personal portrait of a 20th century American childhood and an exploration of a family grappling with the revelation of a painful truth and the upheaval and healing that follows in its wake. It's a film about love, artistic ambition, joy, heartbreak, sacrifice, and the moments of discovery that allow us to see the truth about ourselves and our parents with clarity and compassion. Based on director Steven Spielberg's early life, it is a cinematic memory of the forces and family that shaped him and a universal coming of age story about the courage and the costs of pursuing your dreams. This is The Fablemans. The lights change how everything looks. It's hard to find our house. Ours is the dark house with no lights. In this family, it's the scientists versus the artists. What kind of movie are we gonna make? A group of Boy Scouts pedal bikes past a cluster of young girls on a stroll. The parents watch a movie of their sons in a shootout. You dismiss what he does. It's playful or imaginative. You could afford to be a little encouraging. I don't know what to do anymore. You do what your heart says you have to. The title appears, The Fablemans. Please welcome Ashley Park and Haley Lou Richardson. Haley Lou wears a black sequin gown with pearl embellishments across the top. Hi. Hi. Um, we're here to present the award for male actor in a comedy series. But I don't think people realize how hard comedy really is. I mean, you have to play a chef from Chicago, but a funny one. Yeah, or play not just an assassin, but a funny assassin. Or you might be trying to find a murderer with Selena Gomez, but in a funny way. So much extra work. I know, I mean, I know, right? Are you ready to read the nominees? Um, I don't know if I can do it alone, because I'm kind of tired from, you know, not just trying to be a presenter, but a funny presenter. No, you, Haley, you are so funny. You're so no, funny. No, you're really funny. No, you're no, funny. really funny. Thank you. Should we just read them together? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The, the Here are the, the nominees, nominees for, for male actor in a, in a comedy, comedy series. series. Are, I don't know. Anthony Kerrigan, Barry. This is my first interrogation, you know? I'm like legit nervous. If we don't hear from you in two hours, we'll all take sign bills. What? Ciao, babies. Bill Hader, Barry. A car trunk. Your burgers? Please let me ride up front with you. Here's your drink. Okay. Here's your change. Oh my God, thanks. Okay. Look. Can I at least eat the sandwich before we take off? We gotta go. We gotta go! Steve Martin, only murders in the building. Wow. Two murders back to back. Yep. Now we can start talking to each other like people and not just about murders. Right. Martin Short, only murders in the building. Am I nervous that my son isn't my son? Not at all. In fact, the only thing I am nervous about is producing enough spit for this test because my mouth is so dry right now. Jeremy Allen White, the bear. Okay, chefs, listen up. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the to-go's in 10 minutes, so we're gonna count off, all right? Oh, those clips are great. Okay, are you here? Okay, yes. Okay. And, the and the actor goes to... to Jeremy Allen White! Jeremy stands up from the table with his castmates from the bear. He hugs the woman next to him and his castmate Ao. He blows kisses to the rest of the audience. 
He wears a black double-breasted suit with a black tie and white shirt. He has brown, wavy hair. He scratches his head as he walks to the podium. Thank you, guys. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God. Um, this, um, this is from my peers. This is from the actors. I, I love actors. I love what I do. I feel so lucky to be able to do it. Um, uh, right now, I'm working on the show The Bear. Um, it's, um, it's, um, it's got a lot of heart. Um, that is no accident. Um, Chris Storr, Joanna Kahlo, John Langraff, the cast, um, the crew, um, biggest hearts in the business. And, um, and I, I, I really, I think that that translates, you know, uh, I think that that, I think that that connects and thank God for that. And, um, and to all of you who, uh, who make things here, um, that make me feel a little less lonely, um, that make me feel a little more connected, um, more understood, and, and, and a lot more understanding. Um, I thank you so much. It's why I love this. Um, Ezra, uh, Louis, Addison, you rock my world. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He takes his award off the stage and gives Eugene Levy. Eugene Levy walks out from an arched doorway. He wears a deep teal tuxedo. Thank you. Good evening. I'm here tonight to present the award for ensemble in a comedy series. And I can already read your minds how ironic that a category honoring a group of people is being presented by a solo artist. Well, <laughs> I've been fortunate enough over the years to have been a member of some pretty amazing ensembles from Schitt's Creek to, to Best in Show to to American Pie, and I can tell you there's nothing that tops the experience of sharing the stage with a group of actors who are working at the top of their game, because chances are it's that kind of ensemble that will bring out the best in you. But tonight, that's a chance I couldn't take. <laughs> of being up here in a group, because um, this, this is a big show, and it's live, and I have to look good. And I know what I need to rely on uh, to do that, and it's not necessarily other people. It's more uh, my own somewhat unorthodox uh, sense of um, timing. And it's, uh, it's nice to know there's no traffic on the road up here that could lead to a possible fender bender. <laughs> but for any other gig, give me a good ensemble. <laughs> so here are the nominees for ensemble in a comedy series. The ensemble of Abbott Elementary. You have only dated one man your entire life. Yeah. Uh, no women? Nobody else ever? That just answers so many things, I mean. <laughs> Somebody give me a chair. <laughs> she sits in a chair, then falls off of it. <laughs> the ensemble of Barry. When I met Mr. Cousineau, I was a lost soul. He didn't just teach me how to be a better actor. He taught me how to be a human being. If I don't do this, I don't live! I have to do this to live! I believe that you can be the version of yourself that you want to be. I need a purpose. Forgiveness is something that has to be earned. It's like that line in Shawshank Redemption. Get rich or die trying. Yes. Yes. The ensemble of The Bear. Oh, no, I got it. Thank you, Chef. Why am I using a toothbrush, Chef? It's about consistency and being consistent. Can't operate at a higher level without consistency. I like this level. I like this level. Me too. Yeah, well, at the French Laundry, you know how much time we'd spend? Well, got French Laundry. 
the ensemble of Hacks. So that whole plan about me staying away from Deborah, the opposite is happening. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make your stupid email go away. Have you even talked to Wilson? Talking is not going to change anything. It's never gonna work. You must be the tour manager. Welcome to paradise. Sorry, this is where I sleep? Yeah. She hits her head. <gasps> Deborah saw a yard sale. The ensemble of Only Murders in the Building. Senda sent a mayor to prison for killing someone she knew was still alive. And now she's trying to top herself by sending us to prison for a murder she committed. God, is she good. What? This is so audacious, you know? I wish I'd thought of it, really. I mean, I wouldn't have gone as far, but what commitment, huh? Really? I don't blame the player, blame the game, bruh. No, don't do that. And the actor goes to Abbott Elementary. Quinta holds her hands to her heart. She leads the cast up to the stage. Cheryl Lee Ralph wears a tan dress with a rhinestone netting cape down the back. Lisa Ann Walters wears a black velvet dress with floral appliques on the skirts. Tyler James Williams walks up behind them in a teal tuxedo with white lapels. Wow, guys. For, wow, thank you so much. Um, just, I, that's what I need to say first. Thank you so much. What an honor uh, to be honored by our peers in this way. I know for me especially, this means a lot because um, g being a part of this ensemble means the world to me. I, I uh, unfortunately and fortunately spend a lot of time on both, on um, three sides of this producer and um, creator. And it's, when I get to be a part of this ensemble, it allows me to, that wasn't a humble brag, it's the worst. Uh, <laughs> it's not fun. But when I get to be a part of this ensemble, these people bring me back down to earth. They make me a better actor. They allow me to become an actress that I'm proud of, which um, sometimes acting feels like the hardest, um, most, the part of my job that I could tune out, but I don't want to. I want to be an actor and I want to be a good one. And to be a part of this ensemble makes me a better actor every single day. So thank you for recognizing the work of these amazing people. They are the best and they are so fucking funny all the time, y'all. They're so funny. They really are so funny and good at acting. I'm in awe of all of them at every single turn. And um, we just want to say thank you and, and honored to be in the category with such amazing shows with amazing actors, peers of ours. The, the peer award hits different, don't yeah. it? I feel, I feel good. Oh, and, chat right I know, now. hey girl. Um, so thank you. I feel like five, four, three, two, one. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Cheryl Lee Ralph, Lee, Ralph, Lee Ralph blows kisses to the audience. Words appear. Actors giving actors actors. Oh, so who's gonna read the nominees? <laughs> you mean? You mind if I do the job? Uh, please. <laughs> Thank you. Dolly Parton. I almost didn't get in. They were holding me backstage. They kept wanting to see my IDs. Well, I think it was IDs. Maybe it was just double Ds. I don't know. Something about <laughs> Glad to get that off my chest. Jane and Lily are not my my only two famous girlfriends. Kristen Wiig and John Hamm. After. It touches us. It teaches us. It touches us. Andy Samberg and Rashida Jones. And any actor worth a horse's teat knows <laughs> that collaboration is divine. And any actor worth a frog's green uterus knows <laughs> that the journey inward leads to truth. And when we do it, our little bellies move. Comedic actors have to do all of the same things dramatic actors do, but faster, and often with a chimp. Robin Williams. I am a dancer. I wear pants so tight you can tell what religion I am. We need it in our lives, but not at someone else's expense, unless they trip and they fall down, yep. preferably near a window, the back, and then they, like you see a little, see a little bit, bit of their, of their butt. butt. <laughs> That's funny. 
Actors become energized knowing that their goal is to reach through that screen, relate one-on-one -on -one with the viewers, and make them laugh. Ray Romano. Clint and I, we go back. We were both struggling stand-up comedians. And I gotta be honest, he wasn't that good. Maya Rudolph. He made up a drinking game. It's very simple, here's what you do. You have to take a drink every time, and I mean every time, you hear the word Scorsese. Oh. Megan McCarthy chugs vodka. The room is filled with some of the greatest actors in the world here to honor their favorite performances from the past year. I was not nominated. <laughs> Rita Moreno. Oh my God, that's a lot of love. <sighs> but I can take it. From all of us at the Screen Actors Guild Awards, thank you and good night. Nicole Kidman blows a kiss. Audio description presented by Tide. Please welcome the president of SAG-AFTRA, Fran Drescher. Fran wears a long sleeve black sequin floor length gown with a cutout at the chest. She smiles at the audience. Good evening, everyone. Oh. She wears gold dangly earrings. This year is what I hope will be a long partnership for the SAG Awards and Netflix. A big shout out to the DGA, the WGA, AFM, IATSE, and Teamsters for tonight's show. She applauds. I am very proud to say that SAG-AFTRA and MPA has forged Green Council, the biggest joint effort of stars and studios to save the planet since World War II. Mission number one, an honor system to eliminate single-use plastic on camera behind the scenes and leverage star power to challenge audiences around the world to do the same. You may notice this year on your tables, they're all glass bottles. Congratulations, seniors, of who I am one. Can't hear that enough. If you um, are a member in good standing and on Medicare, then you are eligible for a free supplemental benefit. Woohoo! <laughs> a big thanks to IMDb for taking a stand against ageism, stereotyping, and gender rigidity by allowing our members to define themselves their way on their profile page for free. Well done. And as the nation declares an end to the COVID emergency this May, I hope that we will see everyone return to work in equal opportunity. <laughs> Performers enrich our lives exponentially. So let's make some noise to pass the Performing Arts Tax Parity Act and the American Music Fairness Act. SAG-AFTRA and the NFLPA together forged actors and athletes for democracy. We are the greatest influencers on the planet and must promote freedom for all. Our industry brings billions of production dollars to states across the nation. But if they want our business, let's wield our financial influence to make governors act in the best interest of freedom, diversity, inclusion, and democracy. As my character, Bobby Fleckman, said, and this is Spinal Tap, 
money talks and bullshit walks. Enjoy this evening, everyone, and break a leg. Fran waves to the audience. Please welcome Emily Blunt and Jason Bateman. Emily wears a floor-length gown with red striped material with pink cherry blossoms vining up to from the floor to her shoulder strap. Nope. Okay. Hello, Jason. Hello, Emily. And scene. Great. Loved it. Say high five. Good. What we've done there was an example of acting in its most basic form. Beautifully gang. simple, four word scene to That's greet it. each other as if for the first Tight. time tonight yep. when we've really been hanging out all evening. Yeah, not joking. We've been talking, laughing, yeah. catching up backstage for at least a half hour. Now. Good half hour, yeah. too long, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But um, through our training and our talent, we were able to seem utterly surprised, sort of warmed it's at talent. seeing each other yep. for the first time just now. Five actors that did slightly better work in yes. slightly longer scenes are the Thank nominees. God. Four female actor in a supporting role. Playback. <laughs> Angela Bassett, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. I stood by you after King Munga took the throne, and you and the elders in this room stood by him while I ran begging to the Jabari for protection. She wears a yellow tulle dress at her table. Hong Chao, the whale. I'd come over here, shake him, scream at him, just trying to get him to eat something. God, that was awful. It was awful for me, too. Yeah, well, you weren't the one who had to identify his body all bloated. They wouldn't let me. Hung wears a light pink lace dress. Condon, the Banshees of Inishirin. One boring man, you're all fucking boring. With your piddling grievances over nothing, you're all feckin' boring! She sits at her table and smiles. Jamie Lee Curtis, everything, everywhere, all at once. Nothing but a stack of receipts. I can trace the ups and downs of your lives. She points out a handwritten receipt. It does not look good. Jamie Lee Curtis smiles in her red dress. Stephanie Shu, everything, everywhere, all at once. I might not go somewhere where your... Where your daughter is more than just... This. <laughs> Stephanie beams and holds up a silver ball. And the actor goes to Jamie Lee Curtis, everything, everywhere. Jamie mouths, shut up. She stands up and hugs Michelle Yao and kisses her on the lips. She pumps her fist in the air next to the rest of her cast from everything, everywhere, all at once. She grins and struts across the stage. Angela Bassett stands in the audience. Emily hands her the envelope and Jason hands her the statue. Come on! Stop it! No, no, I don't mean come on good! No, no! Stop! Stop, sorry, I didn't mean come on like more, I meant like stop. <laughs> Jamie shakes her head. Her face fills with emotion. I'm wearing the wedding ring that my father gave my mother. They hated each other, by the way, at the end of the whole thing. <laughs> but my sister Kelly and I were born from love, and my father was from Hungary, and my mother was from Denmark, and they had nothing, and they became these monstrous stars in this industry that they loved so much. My parents were actors. Her eyes glisten. And I married an actor. I love actors. I love acting. I love the job we get to do. I love being a part of a crew. I love being a part of a cast. I love what we do with each other. It's such a beautiful job. And I know that so many people in our industry who are actors don't get to do this job. And you look at nights like this and think, is that ever going to be possible for me? 
And I know you look at me and think, well, Nepo baby, that's why she's there, and I totally get it. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is I'm 64 years old, and this is just amazing. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm over the 45. Where is Michelle Yeoh? Okay. You say Michelle, I say yo. Michelle. Yo. Michelle. Yo. Michelle Yeoh. Rick Kurtzman called me, said, Jamie, the Daniels are making this weird movie with Jonathan. I said, uh-huh, it's being shot in LA. <laughs> she mouths, fuck, yes, and pumps her fist. And it stars Michelle Yeoh. I said yes. He said, well, no, wait. Wait, it's a little weird. I said, yeah, but she's in it? Yes. And I get to be opposite her? Yes, I'll do it. Michelle Yeoh? Michelle Yeoh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Michelle stands and blows her a kiss. For all the Deirdres, for all the Evelyns and Deirdres in the world, we love you, we see you, we feel you, we are you. We're here together. God bless you all. What a dream, man. Jamie shakes her head and then curtsies. A tear falls from Michelle Yeoh's face. Jamie wanders around the stage looking for the exit. And now, Jesse Buckley, Claire Foy, and Rooney Mara. The trio of women walk towards the microphone. Claire wears a chartreuse, plunging neckline, floor-length dress. To do nothing, to stay and fight, or to leave. Three choices, each with their own heartbreaking consequences. Hoping to break free from a cycle of violence, the women in an isolated religious colony debate their options and find strength in solidarity. Inspired by true events, this is a story of resilience. It's imagining another future. This is Women Talking. We were given two days to forgive the attackers before they returned. We hardly knew how to read or to write, but that day, we learned how to vote. If we do not forget these men, we forfeit our place in heaven. We know that we are bruised and infected and pregnant and some of us are dead. Have we made a decision? Our choice will be your future. The title appears, Women Talking. Please welcome Orlando Bloom. Orlando steps out onto stage in a deep, navy tuxedo with silk black lapels. Every actor knows a supporting role is a brilliant opportunity to steal the film. <laughs> but the very best actors know that every role is an opportunity to be supportive. It's what we do as actors. We support each other. Here are the nominees for male actor in a supporting role. Paul Dano, The Fablemans. He is my best friend. But they don't need him. This is what I know. In the audience, Paul wears a white turtleneck and white tuxedo jacket. Brendan Gleeson, The Banshees of Inishirin. So, we keep aimlessly chatting, and my life will keep dwindling, and in 12 years I'll die with nothing to show for it. Brendan crosses his arms and smiles at his table. Barry Keoghan, the Banshees of Inishirin. I probably wouldn't ever want to, I don't know, to fall in love with a boy like me, would you? Barry wears an all-white suit with a white shirt. Hui Kwan, everything, everywhere, all at once. Perfect. Subtitles. In another life, I would have really liked just doing laundry and taxes with you. I see you, dear. In the audience, key beams. Redmayne, the good nurse. I can't, I'm not meant to talk about patients without the hospital lawyers. But you don't work there anymore, Charlie. You can say whatever you want. Yes, you're free to talk here. So I can't. 
Eddie wears a flowy white shirt with a large tie at the neck. He hops up with his hands over his mouth. He hugs the woman next to him and walks over to Michelle Yeoh and hugs her. He takes the hand of another castmate and makes his way to the stage. He wears a teal tuxedo with black lapels and a black bow tie. He holds back emotion. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, this is a really emotional moment for me. Recently, I was told that if I were to win tonight, I would become the very first Asian actor to win in this category. His eyes fill with tears. When I, when I heard this, I quickly realized that this moment no longer belongs to just me. It also belongs to everyone who has asked for change. When I, when I stepped away from acting, it was because there were so few opportunities. And now, tonight, here we are, celebrating James Hong, Michelle Yeoh, Stephanie Hsu, Hong Chao, Harry Shum Jr. The landscape looks so different now than before. So thank you so much to all of you in this room and everyone who contributed to these changes. And, and thank you so much to SAG AFTRA for this truly, truly prestigious honor. Uh, of course, thank you to Michelle Yeoh. Michelle, uh, I'm so glad that when we both started our careers in 1984, that one day we would meet on the big screen. Love you, Michelle. Uh, thank you to Jamie Lee Curtis and our entire cast. And lastly, to all those at home who are watching, who are struggling and waiting to be seen, please keep on going because the spotlight will one day find you. Tears fill his eyes and his lip trembles. Thank you, everyone, for rooting for me. I will be rooting for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He blows kisses to the audience and waves. Words appear, a look back, and Lil Ansbury. So tonight is dedicated to the art and craft of acting by the people who should know about it, actors. Jessica, Sarah Jessica Parker. The only thing I ever wanted to do. I'm just so thrilled to be an actor. I really feel so much better about my level of talent than I did this afternoon. I get to play so many parts and I think, I think how lucky I am. I mean, I, I worked for 10 years. I never got $1 more than Screen Actors Guild minimum. I've been doing this since I was 19 years old. That's a long time. I realized I wanted to be an actor. I was about 14. I was watching a performance of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and somewhere between the first and second act, I forgot my mother was playing Martha. I'll never forget going into the New Beverly Cinema and, uh, and seeing James Dean in East of Eden for the first time. And it was in that one moment that I knew I wanted to be a screen actor. So tonight, we honor some of the people who do it right. I see them now. They're observing me, I'm observing them. We're observing each other. The joint is an observatory tonight. Thank you very much for this. Um, I was sitting over there sweating like Marlon Brando after Thai food and... <laughs> this is, uh, I am, I'm stunned. I think you just took this off a of Bentley. Thank you. The Friends Ensemble. This is an informative night for me because I always thought the uh, Ensemble Award was a, uh, was a wardrobe award. Mark Addy. <laughs> the clothes will stay on. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint so many people at one time. 
It's very humbling to get an award like this, which has better legs than I do. Gary Sinise. Now, I got to tell you, this, just being in this room and looking at these people, everyone in here has been a teacher to me. Jack Nicholson. I mean, Jack Nicholson is here. I mean, he's there. Jack! You're there, man! One flew over the cuckoo's nest. I'm in Chinatown. The last detail. Robert Duvall, Dustin Hoffman, these people have incited a riot in me and made me want to be an actor. And so many of you people, I've learned so much. Thank you very much. Audio description presented by Tide. Please welcome Diego Calva, Lejeune Lee, and Jovan Adepo. The actors walk on stage. Lee Jun Lee wears a sheer sequin netted gown. Please sit. We are about to speak. So please sit down. Yeah, 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 it's a ceremony right now, so please. <laughs> Thank you. It's Hollywood in the 1920s, a world of movie studios and screen idols where morality is fleeting, debauchery and self-indulgence are the rule. <laughs> Silent films are becoming talkies, and with this sea change, new stars are made and others fade away, though all of them will endure in motion picture history. Living to extremes, more unbelievable than the wildest cinematic fantasy, and needing movies and the movie business, perhaps more than life itself. And what a view, eh? <laughs> it's beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, señoras y señores, esto es Babylon. When I first moved to LA, signs on all the doors said, no actors or dogs allowed. I changed that. And now, Y'all ready for something different? Whoa! Warriors in red charge warriors in blue. Nelly gyrates in the middle of a crowd. Sydney plays a trumpet on stage. It's the most magical place in the world. Lady Feiju wears a top hat and red lipstick. Jack wears sunglasses in the top hat. A crowd dances around the jazz band. The title appears in blue, Babylon. And now, please welcome Andrew Garfield. Andrew walks on stage in a double-breasted, deep navy blue tuxedo with a white shirt and open collar. He shrugs his shoulders. Hello, everyone. Hello, Sally Field. <laughs> How you doing? You okay right now? So, tonight, I am tasked with the beautifully impossible privilege of expressing our collective love and gratitude for the career the life and the spirit of one of the greatest actors to have lived. Your fave, your mother's fave, and mine, Miss Sally Field. Sally makes prayer hands and holds them to her forehead. I'm sorry this is happening. I'm really sorry, Sally. You evoke awe in every actor's heart, you inspire us to believe that a huge creative life of richness, depth, humor, joy, pathos, mystery is possible. And you also show us how to do it somehow miraculously with humility. You never drink the Kool-Aid of your own brilliance. You never get high on your own supply. She but shakes her head. We're going to try and make you. I got to play Peter Parker to, to Sally's Aunt May, and any intimidation I may have felt from playing opposite a titan of acting evaporated the moment my eyes found hers. Her generosity, her sensitivity, her imagination, her playfulness has seemed to have kept her striving in the pursuit of that ineffable mystery at the heart of every character she plays. The truth, nobility, the beauty, and dignity of their human soul. You're a North Star for all of us, and especially, of course, in inspiring, liberating, and empowering women, charting a previously pathless path in an era of often unimaginative and one-dimensional female roles. Sally was Gidget, independent. You've got to see Gidget if you haven't seen Gidget. People under 30, you've got to check out Gidget because it's insanely good and funny. And she was smart and she was funny. And then she was maybe the first true female superhero, the flying nun. 
And if you haven't seen The Flying Nun, it literally does what it says on the tin. She plays a nun that flies. And it's because of the hat she's wearing and her slight frame. She catches the wind and she makes the miraculous believable. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and incredible. She was, of course, the working class mother and revolutionary unionizer, Norma Ray. A film and character that awoke the hearts and minds of countless young women. Steel Magnolias, Malin Eatonton, Edna Spaulding in Places in the Heart. There are too many to name. She's a pioneer of our industry with fire, empathy, and love in her heart. Sally has devoted her life off screen to righteous advocacy, a, fi a fighter for women's rights and for women in media. She's a fierce ally to the LGBTQIA community. She is a climate activist arrested not long ago while protesting in Washington, D.C. She's a gangster. And she's won a lot of shit. She's won so much shit. She's won the SAG Award. She's won three Primetime Emmys. She's won two Academy Awards. She's a Kennedy Center honoree. She's a recipient of, recipient of the National Medal of Arts. And she's also beloved, maybe most importantly, beloved throughout her community of actors. Julia Roberts told me Sally Field is a unicorn. That rare type of person who can be a mentor and a best friend all at the same time. Dolly Parton said, I can't, I'm not going to do a Dolly Parton impression, even though I'd like to. But you'd be able, you'll, you'll hear the rhythm of Dolly in this. I guess in this case, SAG stands for Sally, always great. <laughs> Just with a British accent. She is and always will be. And, J and Jane Fonda adds, Sally is the epitome of acting greatness, inspired, unafraid of going deep and raw and overflowing with empathy. How you doing, Sally? <laughs> she wants to go home. She grimaces. The Kool-Aid, guys. Um, so here is just a small slice of the genius of the great humble Sally Field. Morning. Clips of Sally Field in multiple roles appear. Oh, aren't you, you on a TV oh, show? Oh, oh, on a TV show. Visiting hours and on. <gasps> a win. A man hangs from the side of a moving train and scoops her up. They both fall into the mud. What are you doing? I'm taking a shower. The whole time, the, the whole time, you would... The whole time? Oh, I love this movie. I am a hustler. I know where the bodies are buried. I'm not afraid of anything. No, sir. Whose hands are Sybil and Peggy afraid of? Don't you dare tell. You tell, and I'll fix it so you ain't got nothing to tell with. I should have clapped you in the madhouse. Then do it. Do it. Don't you threaten me. You do it this time. Lock me away. You'll have to, I swear. Good. I'm so mad. I don't know what to do. I want to know why. I want to know why Shelby's life is over. I want to know how that baby will ever know how wonderful his mother was. I know you think you're the only one that's ever been there for either of us, and maybe that's true. No, that is true. All right. But, Abby, I'm here now. I'm going to lose what's left of my family. I'm not going to let that happen. I will not tell you where that story came from. It's the truth, and that's enough. Okay, quiet down. I didn't... Quiet down. Is that the only way you like your women? Or nice and quiet? You're coming mighty close to blasphemy, Norma. I've come here and said I sinned and I done wrong and I asked for God to forgive me. Now, I want to see what this church stands for. I want to see if you'll stand up in that pulpit and say there ought to be justice, there ought to be a union. And if you're smitten and you rise up and the Lord will be on your side. And if you don't, and I say there ain't nothing good for me in that church, and I'm going to leave it flat. Life is a box of chocolates for us. You never know what you're going to get. Is this about change, or is this about running and running and running and running? And one point, you've got to stop and say, all right, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Be courageous. Be brave. Be you. Isn't that what friendship is, that we face the unknown together? If you can be a success at only one thing, and that one thing is love, you'll be on your way to being a happy man. I think you're beautiful. You going to kiss me now? No. All right. It happened. I slept with him. But I'm in love for the last time in my life. I'm in love for the first time in my life. I get it. Yeah. A man forces a kiss on her. She knees him in the groin. In a different clip, she imagines kissing a young man. Doris? Do Doris? <laughs> Doris, are you okay? Oh, yeah. 
She hops around a bedroom dancing. Clips of her face spanning decades appear on screen. As a young woman, she plays Gidget and rides a surfboard. She dances at a party in an elaborate hat as the flying nun. She shimmies around the living room. Now she slow dances on a porch. Her head. You gonna be all right? I'm always all right. To us. An image of Sally's smiling face freezes on screen. The audience rises to their feet. Sally, you show us how to live a life devoted to art, love, and service. And for that, it is my honor to present the SAG Life Achievement Award to you. The amazing Sally Field. We love you. Sally makes her way to the stage. She wears a ankle-length gown that appears sheer with black sequin patterns along it. Austin Butler helps her to the stage. He wears a red suit. Andrew hugs Sally. The award is a comedy mask on top of a black marble rectangle. Thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, Lord in heaven, actors all standing on their feet. Oh, gosh. Okay. In the fall of 1964, I was standing in front of a camera on a freezing cold beach in Malibu, and I said my first lines of dialogue as a professional actor. You see before you me, Gidget. Uh, I was 17, fresh out of high school. I didn't have an agent, and I was working under what's called the Taft-Hartley Law. A few months later, the show was picked up, and all of a sudden, I was the star of a television series. And I became a member of the Screen Actors Guild. I remember so clearly putting that little paper card in my wallet, quietly thrilled to call myself an actor. I first found this stage when I was 12 years old in the seventh grade, and after that I never left the drama department. Back, you know, when schools actually had drama departments. I, I found this magic. On stage, I, it was the one place I could be freely me more than any other place. When I got off stage, I felt shy and, and careful and hidden. I would think and rethink everything before I could say or do anything. But on stage, I never knew what I would say or do. I would surprise myself. I wasn't looking for the applause or attention, even though that's nice. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> and it, it was never, and it has never been about a, a, a need to hide myself behind the characters of other people. Acting to me has always been about finding those few precious moments when I feel totally, utterly, sometimes dangerously alive. So the task has always been to find a way to get to that, to get to the work, to claw my way to it if necessary. Struggling to climb my way out of the box of situation comedy in the 60s and 70s took a fierceness I didn't know I had Honestly, I, I, I was a little white girl with a pug nose born in Pasadena, California. And when I look around this room tonight, I know my fight, as hard as it was, was lightweight compared to some of yours. I thank you and I applaud you. And I know that for you, just like for me, it has not been easy. But you know what? Nah. Easy is overrated. She bites her lip. I've, I've flown on wires and surfed in the ocean, rode on horses, on, in wagon trains, and fast cars. I've had multiple personality, worked, worked in a textile mill, picked cotton. Uh, I've been Mrs. Doubtfire's employer 
Forrest Gump's mother, Lincoln's wife, and Spider-Man's aunt. <laughs> I, I've done scenes wearing 50 pounds of period dresses, been fully clothed, semi-clothed, and totally naked. Huh, Jeff, don't you know? <laughs> uh, but sometimes, Sometimes, oh God, thank you. I have been lucky enough to be a part of projects, to work on projects whose screenplays were so good that my hands shook the first time I read them. Projects with such deep and complicated characters that the process of understanding them, of owning them somewhere inside changed me. They they opened and revealed parts of myself I would not have known otherwise. I've worked my whole life. I've ridden the highs and tried to learn from the lows. And in all of these almost 60 years, there is not a day that I don't feel quietly thrilled to call myself an actor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for this great honor from you, the people I most wanted respect from in my life, actors. Thank you. She bows her head to the audience. The audience rises again. Andrew Hans takes the award and escorts her towards the back of the stage. Words appear, I am an actor. My name is Anne Hathaway and I'm an actor. I'm Carrie Washington and I am an actor. I'm Jeff Bridges. I'm Anna Klumski. Sterling K. Brown. I'm Sally Field. I'm Mel Fanning. I'm Ben Kingsley. I am Kristen Bell and I am a narcissist. <laughs> Sorry. I am an actor. My favorite thing about acting is that it truly allows you to transform yourself into another person. I'm Johnny Depp, and I'm an actor. When I was a kid, I used to lock myself in the bathroom and create a collection of characters. I thought I was insane. <laughs> My name is Rami Malek. I'm not insane. I'm an actor. When I was a little girl growing up in New York City, all I ever wanted to be was Scarlett O'Hara. Oh, well. I grew up in Barranquilla, Colombia, in a very traditional Catholic home. My father told me that if I ever did anything artistic, I was going to look like a hooker. I told him, with these huge boobs that I inherited from your mother, I already look like a hooker. I am Sofia Vergara, and I am an actor. I'm Brad Garrett, and I don't belong here. What are you doing? I'm doing my How I Became an Actor speech. You've taken three times as long as everybody else and you're still not finished. My story's complex. <laughs> well, you've used it so much time they're telling us they had to cut Tom Hanks. So. Well, it's, that's all right. I know Tom. He's a good guy. He'll take it well. Tom Hanks gapes. On January 15, 2009, a U.S. Airways pilot named Chesley Sullenberger performed an exacting, perfect emergency landing into the icy cold waters of the Hudson River. It's a good thing that I was not behind the controls of that plane, because I'm Steve Carell, and I am an actor. I have often been told I'm not thin enough, I'm not white enough, uh, I'm not short enough, I'm not man enough. <laughs> Damn it, I am enough. I am Queen Latifah, and I'm an actor. <laughs> I've talked my way out of 11 fights. I've cried more this year than most women do in a lifetime. Wherever I go, I seek out a mirror, and when one's not available, I'll make do with a car window or a dark picture. I'm Will Arnett, and I'm an alcoholic actor. Please welcome Ariana DeBose and Diego Luna. Ariana wears a fuchsia suit jacket that goes to her knees and pants. <laughs> Yo, Renee. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Don't worry, we 
Diego wears a velvet oh, okay. tuxedo. Okay. Go ahead, sit on down. We're, we're back. <laughs> Buenas noches a todas y a todos. Eh, muchas gracias por sentarse. ¿Cómo se dice um, si se pueden sentar y callar en inglés? Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. And sit down. There you go. There you go. Sit eh, down and shut the hell up. There Buenas noches. Go. Yeah. The five characters brought to life by the women in this category are each in the middle of their own challenging journey. That's the part we see. The part we don't see is the journey these women have taken as actors to arrive at these deep and truthful portrayals. Both parts together are the remarkable work that we honor tonight. Diego, do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Bassett blows a kiss from the audience. Okay. okay. Here, here are the nominees for female actor. <laughs> was that good? No, no, right? no it's that perfect. You're perfect. Female actor in a drama series. Diego puts a hand on his hip. Coolidge, the White Lotus. These days, they take me off to Palermo. And then they set me up with this guy who's in the mafia. And he's coming here, I think to try to throw me off the boat. In the audience, she giggles at her table. Elizabeth Debicki, The Crown. I don't speak with bitterness or anger, but sorrow, because a marriage has failed. Elizabeth shrugs her shoulders. Julia Garner, Ozark. I don't know. I don't blame you for doubting me, ma'am. I get it. I do. She smiles in the audience. Laura Linney, Ozark. Five hours ago, we had it. You threw it away. We were clean. We were out. Laura wears her hair slicked back and smiles. Zendaya, Euphoria. You told me that if I ever wanted to be with you, all I would have to do is close my eyes and we'd be together. She claps her hands at her seat. And the actor goes to Jennifer Coolidge for White Lotus! Jennifer mouths wow over and over. She stands up in her low-cut, long-sleeve, black, floor-length gown. The dress is cinched at her chest. She wears a black headband. Austin Butler escorts her up to the stage. She has silver rhinestone high heels. She kisses Ariana's cheeks, and then Diego's. She holds the statue. She waves to the audience. Wow. Wow, I... Uh, uh, I, you know... Uh, well. She puts her hands on her hips. I don't know why this is yet. I, uh, I thought, you know, it's been a very special year and it's, it's you know, overwhelming. And White Lotus and Mike White writing me this great part that went on for two seasons and, and, and it just HBO giving me this, you know, the, the, uh, the thumbs up to let me do it. And, and you know, I just, I just want to say, um, I want you all to know that I am just so grateful, so grateful because... Her eyes fill with tears. You know, um, um, you know, Mike White, you know, uh, you know, you can give money to friends and do nice things for them, but 
you know, and people love money, you know, and I do whenever I can, you know, when your friends are broke, whatever, you can give money stuff. But you know what people really, the best gift you can give someone is to change someone's perspective for the better and view life in a different way. And that's what Mike White did for me. And, um, and so, you know, and, and HBO, you know, Casey Bloys and, and Francesca Orsi and Nora Skinner, thank you. And I just, um, I, I want to say thank you, Jonathan Weinstein. Thank you, Jacob Fetton. Thank you, Tiffany Kuzan, for um, keeping me going here. But I, what I really want to say is, um, what I really want to say is, you know, um, I had these amazing parents, and they had this incredible gift. Well, and then I think they they were. Imp it was impossible for them to lie. They just couldn't do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> never, never, they just never lied, except, except that my, my father, um, one day, I, the school principal came to my first grade class and said that um, I needed to be called to the office. And I went to the office, and she said, um, you know, your father's here. And my father was sitting there, and he goes, yeah, Jenny, we have to go. And she said, um, the principal said, well, Jennifer, get well. And I didn't know what that meant. And then I got in the car with my dad, and he, and he was driving, and he said, I'm never going to tell a lie again, but we're going somewhere really cool. And he drove me to this place, and it was this fluky thing in Massachusetts. It was the Charlie Chaplin Film Festival. He got me out of my first grade, grade class to do it, and I swear to God, that seeing Charlie Chaplin for the first time and, and having that experience of like, it's my love of film, it's my love of actors, all of that came from my first grade. So anyway, thank you and my beautiful date, you know, my wonderful date, Tim Bagley is my date tonight, he's my be best bud for like 20 years. Thank you, you're a wonderful date tonight. I can't wait till we get home. And, uh, <laughs> he laughs at the table. They escort Jennifer off the stage. And now, Antonia Gentry and Caleb McLaughlin. Antonia wears a lavender strapless gown with a cutout at the abdomen. Caleb wears his hair in braids. Male actor in a drama series. I love this category, but I really want to avoid any spoilers. Spoilers? You haven't been watching these shows? Oh, no, no. I'm all caught up. I just want to avoid spoiling which nominee gets the actor. Did you already open the envelope? No. Maybe. I mean... Oh, no. Okay, before you blurt it out and get our SAG after cards evoked, here are the nominees for Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Drama Series. Jonathan Banks, Better Call Saul. Hey, 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 you do what your mother says. The stars will still be in the sky tomorrow night. I promise. Okay. Good night, Pop Pop. Love you. Love you, baby. In the audience, a woman shakes Jonathan's shoulders. Jason Bateman, Ozark. You know, I got us into this. You're getting us out of this. Yeah. We, we chose this together. Jason smiles in the audience. Jeff Bridges, the old man. I fired back. I, I, I shot him. I think he's dead. Sir, please stay on the line. Repeat your name again. My name is Dan Chase. Jeff wears glasses and a black tuxedo. Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul. What? All right. Let justice be done, though the heavens fall. Bob smiles at the camera and gives a thumbs up. Adam Scott, Severance. The work is mysterious and important. And we deal with the uncertainty it brings us in the way that Kier would have wanted. 
together. Adam wears a maroon corduroy tuxedo jacket. And the actor goes to Jason Bateman. Jason shakes his head. He has brown, wavy hair. Laura Linney hugs him. A woman with long, dark hair gives him a kiss. He buttons his suit coat and walks up the stairs. The presenters hand him the award. You did say my name, right? No, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you to anyone in this room that voted for me and anybody at home that did. Um, you've given me a chance to, uh, to say kind of a final thank you to not only the people that watch this show, because if you, if you didn't, uh, we wouldn't be here. Um, and I get to say thank you to my wife, Amanda, uh, my, my two kids at home, uh, Maple and Francesca. They uh, made me feel like I was a good dad, even though I was gone for six months every year. And so they're better actors than I am. Um, Ted, where are you? Ted Sarandos uh, gave me uh, all the trust that I asked for, and I just can't thank you enough, buddy. Truly. Um, Laura and Julia and the rest of the cast um, taught me so much and made the show everything that it is. Um, Chris, you, Chris Mundy, and your, your writing staff wrote incredible stuff that we all got to enjoy, myself included. Uh, you, you made the show uh, incredible. Um, and finally to the crew, uh, it's just, as you guys know, who are lucky enough to work on great projects, that was a great project because it was a great crew. It was a great family. People treated each other well. People had pride in what they were doing. Um, and that's it. I mean, if you can have harmony on a set, you can enjoy what you're doing. We only get paid for about 75% of of, uh, of work. You won't get fired if you only do 75%, but the only way to get to 100% is if people really like where they're at and they like each other and they treat each other well. And we did there, so thank you guys. I'm going to miss you all a lot. Uh, and thank you all. He waves to the audience and walks off stage. Please welcome Jenny Slate and James Marsden. James Marsden wears a baby blue tuxedo with silk lapels and a black bow tie. Jenny Slate wears a black floor-length gown. Hey, James. Hi. About time you showed up, hon. What, what do you mean? We got it at the same time. OK, well, all I'm saying by insulting you right away in front of all of these people is that an ensemble cast requires a team player. So I'm going to need you to bring your a cream. Literally walked in the exact same time as you. Okay, a little bit about me. I don't need excuses. <laughs> I just need results. <clears throat> okay, uh, I hear you. Should I, should I toss to the nominees? Okay, oh, hey, honey, I'm really not here to tell you how to do your job, James. I, <laughs> right. This is bizarre. Right. <laughs> oh. I'm so sorry. And you know what? I'm super kind and I accept your apology. Thank you. You're welcome, honey. Here are the nominees for Ensemble in a Drama Series. The Ensemble of Better Call Saul. Jimmy grabs Kim and they stare at Howard. Oh. <sighs> Howard? Howard. Howard, you need to leave. The ensemble of The Crown. The House of Windsor should be binding the nation together, setting an example of idealized family life. It's a situation that cannot help but affect the stability of the country. Remember the one condition, the one rule. You remain loyal to this family. You mean silent? Yes, it's a system. For better or for worse, we're all stuck in it. The ensemble of Ozark. I don't give a damn what you or your Mexicans have to say about anything. Okay. 
But if you don't do this, their response is going to be quick and it's going to be brutal. We're just the messengers here. Right. The ensemble of Severance. Milchik shimmies under colorful lights. <laughs> okay. Helly shakes a maraca. She watches Milchik wiggle his shoulders and circle around her. The ensemble of The White Lotus. You guys are here to learn about your Sicilian roots. Sounds like a fun boys trip. Wasn't well, supposed to be a boys trip. Did you vote, babe? Be honest. I did, didn't I? Doesn't matter. You bring your assistant to a vacation with your husband. It's not like she's gonna be in our bed and stuff. A man does what he has to do. I think he's having an affair. But you keep it tight. How's that? Well, I mean, I, the clip package did a lot of the heavy lifting. Sure. But I think that you were just fine. Sure. All right. Cool. Great. And the actor goes to the White Lotus. The cast of the White Lotus hop up from their table. Jennifer Coolidge hugs one of her castmates. Megan Faye hugs Jennifer Coolidge. Megan wears a floor-length white sequin gown with a cutout at the side that exposes her rib cage and her hip. The cast finds their way to the stage. Aubrey Plaza wears sunglasses with her bronze sequin gown. James Marsden hands over, tries to hand over the award. About two dozen people step on the stage. gray hair. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sag after. Thank you, HBO. This was the best job I ever had. <laughs> and not only, not only because of this really remarkable, wonderful family of actors, but because Mike and David and Mark pulled together an international company of technicians and actors and we all lived together in the same place. We all ate together and we all worked together. So this is not only for the actors, this is for the entire company. This is a, this is a, this is a wonderful time, but I'd like to send a prayer out to, to the earthquake victims in Syria and Turkey and a prayer, a prayer for peace in Ukraine and Russia. He does the sign of the cross. He pumps that award in the air. The cast chat with each other and embrace. On screen, the word Screen Actors Guild Awards appears. Two large versions of the statue awards stand on either side of the screen. It's the actor holding one comedy mask and one tragedy mask. The cast makes their way from the stage. And now, please welcome Don Cheadle. Don wears a black suit with a black tie and white shirt. He looks out into the audience. He wears diamond earrings. As fellow actors, we were their friends and colleagues, 
as members of their audience, we were their fans. Regardless of the relationship, we knew and loved the actors we lost this year, last year. Endless hours were spent in their company, everywhere from movie theaters to living rooms, even in the bedroom with headphones on while our partner was asleep. We traveled with them on unforgettable journeys, and they told us the best stories. And although they've passed on, they've left behind the most beautiful gift, the ability to spend that precious time with them over and over again forever. On screen, the words appear in memoriam. Leslie Jordan. When you start getting good at life, it goes away. The screen fades to black. Words appear. Power of the Union. Tom Hanks. This man is holding the masks of comedy and tragedy. Both so hard to do and will make you lose sleep, question your motives, wonder why you're doing this in the first place. But if you're crazy enough to want to do that, you can get one of these, a Screen Actors Guild card. We've all got our wonderful stories and our memories that are connected with this. I got my SAG card when I was 14. It felt like the beginning of the world. I have loved every single minute of my life as an actor. I remember getting my SAG card from Law and Order. That was 20 years ago. I earned my SAG card when I was 14. I did an MTV promo for my Super Sweet 16. And I remember getting it in the mail and it being the best day of my entire life because it officially made me a professional actor. And I got a Bob's Big Boy commercial, and I got into SAG. 
And that's, that was a, hum we were a humble beginnings, but you have to start somewhere. Been a member for 30 years. I've been working since I was 11 years old and SAG has taken care of me. They made sure that I wasn't working too long and I got my education while I was working. Without unions, we'd be working 18 hour days, six days a week. The day my parents accepted that I was an actor was the day that I told them, I get insurance. I'm just so thrilled I have dental. I thank sag after for tireless, tirelessly fighting on our behalf. I'm so grateful to have this union um, protecting me every day. Unions made this country great because it gives the voice to the working people. I've been a proud member of this extraordinary union for several decades now. Our guilds are unions of storytellers who have always welcomed those from the nations and of varying beliefs who wish to share their creativity with America. We stand up here representing a diverse group of people from places like Nigeria, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Colombia, yeah. Ireland, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. <laughs> yes. And to be up here is truly an honor. Thank you. To everybody out there who's digging for your um, SAG dudes, keep digging, because it's a great life. <laughs> Audio description presented by Tide. Please welcome Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. Colin and Brendan both wear black tuxedos with white shirts and black bow ties. They walk up to the microphone. <laughs> Set amidst the turbulence of the death of a lifelong friendship, tonight's final nominee for cast in a motion picture paints a portrait of the duality within the human soul. Ironically harnessing a huge generosity of spirit amongst its cast and no shortage of hilarity, the film explores the savage sacrifices which creative and emotional aspiration can demand of those affected by it. As with Civil War, which serves as the backdrop, it is most often the innocent who bear the greatest costs. From animals to the human inhabitants on the islands of Inish Erin, each being pays their own price for the tragedies that befall, proving that interconnection is the universal road on which we all must travel, whether we like it or not. It's the truth. This is the Banshees of Inish Erin. Yes, it is. I just don't like you no more. You liked me yesterday. What the hell's going on with you, me feckin' brother? He's dull, Siobhan. But he's always been dull. Why aren't you talking to Porrig no more? That wouldn't be a sin, now, would it, Father? No, but it's not very nice either, is it? Why is he 12? He can't be waiting around for any more of this madness. Porrig smashes his reflection in the mirror. Colin shuts the door to the pub. Call it quits. We won't call it quits. We'll call it the start. The title appears. The Banshees of Inna Sharon. And now, Jeff Bridges. Jeff wears a black tuxedo with a black vest, a white shirt, and black bow tie. He wears glasses. All five nominees in this category have something in common. They're all female protagonists who entered into a hostile space. Some soared above it, some were crushed under the weight of it. But no matter their ending, each one was fully inhabited by an actor who bore unflinching witness to their story. Here are the nominees for female actor in a leading role. Kate Blanchett, Tar. You want to dance the mask, you must service the composer. You've got to sublimate yourself, your ego, and yes, your identity. You must, in fact, stand in front of the public and God and obliterate yourself. Kate wears a black gown with black lace over the top. Viola Davis, the Woman King. Your teeth mean nothing. To be a warrior, you must kill your teeth. Viola smiles in a chartreuse dress. Danielle Deadweiler, Till. The lynching of my son has shown me that what happens to any of us anywhere in the world had better be the business of us all. <laughs> Danielle grins and looks at the camera. Anna de Armas, blonde. I want to live in another world, away from Hollywood. I 
111. <gasps> Check him. Hannah de Armas grins. Michelle Yeoh, everything, everywhere, all at once. I still want to be sure with you. I will always, always want to be here with you. Michelle grins and blows a kiss. And the actor goes to Michelle. Yeah! Michelle covers her mouth and screams. She stands up and looks around at her table. They jump up and down and pump their fists in the air. Key gives her a hug. Jamie pulls her in for an embrace. Michelle is escorted up to the stage. She wears a strapless black velvet gown with yellow sequins down the center. She pounds her fist on the podium. She makes a circle on her forehead with her hands. She looks down and fights back emotion. I think if I speak, my heart will explode. <laughs> sag after. to get this from you, who understands what it is, to get here, every one of you know the journey, the roller coaster ride, the ups and downs. But most important, we never give up. I thank you. For your love, for your support, because I know I'm up against titans, rightly so. She turns away from the microphone as her face twists with emotion. <laughs> just for me, this is for every little girl that looks like me. Sally Field, you said all the right things because we here, we're here because we love what we do. And we will never stop doing this because we really, really love it. But thank you for giving me a seat at the table because so many of us need this. We want to be seen, we want to be heard. And tonight, you have shown us that it is possible. And I am grateful and my mom will be eternally grateful to you. <laughs> Stephanie cries at the table with the cast. <laughs> Michelle holds her hand to her heart. Oh Thank you. I'm going to walk away. Please welcome Jessica Chastain. Jessica walks on stage up to a podium. As actors, an essential part of telling stories is to deeply understand our characters and to make the audience understand them too. The five men in this category do that brilliantly, taking us through some challenging and sometimes gut-wrenching human experiences. And in doing so, they tap into some of our innermost feelings in the most compelling and beautiful ways. Here are the nominees for male actor in a leading role. Austin Butler, Elvis. Everyone stole me. When things are too dangerous to say, sing. Austin nods at his table, then smiles to the camera. Colin Farrell, the Banshees of Inishirin. I never used to be nice. Or did you never used to be? Oh, God. Maybe you never used to be. Colin Mouse, thank you. Brendan Fraser, the whale. 
She's gonna be okay. I need to go. Mary, she doesn't I have to go. have anyone else. I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life. Brendan grins and looks around the room. Bill Nye, living. I'm happy. Well, at least keep the application open for one more week. What harm can that do? Bill applauds at his seat. Adam Sandler, hustle. You told me to quit. I know, and I meant it until you actually did it. Now I'm kind of freaked out about it. Well, I'm not. I know what I'm doing. You'll see. I'll show you. Yeah, you do that. She leaves. Adam Sandler waves. And the actor goes to... Brendan Fraser. Brendan's eyebrows lift and he stands. He wears a black and teal tuxedo coat and dark-rimmed glasses. He has brown, spiky hair. He hugs Adam Sandler on his way up to the stage. He wears a black shirt and black bow tie. <laughs> oh, um, I'm smiling, I'm breathing. That's half the job. Um, I'm, I'm uh, Ian McKellen told me to be good, be brief, and be seated. <laughs> so here goes. Um, uh, this is good. Um, sort of naked man making up his mind to smile or to frown. It's, it's, you know, like an actor, right? He looks at the award. Um, I uh, will treasure this, but never more than what I treasured that I used to keep in my wallet, which was my SAG card that I earned in 1991. It made me feel like I belonged. We, we're actors, we all want to belong to a tribe. And that's when I found where I belonged. And if you told that guy back then that I'd be standing right here, right now, I would not have believed you. I um, wouldn't have believed that I had a chance to work with a world-class filmmaker like Darren Aronofsky and speak the words of an empathy fountain that is Samuel D. Hunter and an incredible castmates like Hong Chow and, and Sadie Sink and Ty Simpkins and Samantha Morton. And I um, never would have believed that I would have been offered the role of my life in this character, Charlie in the Whale. He's someone who is on a, a raft of regrets, but he's in a sea of hope, and and I, I've I've been at that sea, and I've rode that wave lately, and it's been powerful and good, and I've also had that wave smash me right down to the ocean floor, and drag my face along there, and wind up on some strange beach in a different world, and wondering where am I now, and I just want you to know for. For real, all the actors out there who have gone through that, who are going through that, I know how you feel. But believe me, if you just stay in there and you put one foot in front of the other, you'll get to where you need to go. Have courage without the love of my children, Griffin and Holden and Leland and their super mom, Afton, and my badass agent, Joanne Colonna. And the clarion call that is my girl, Jeannie. I wouldn't be able to do any of this. Thank you so very much. I'm so grateful. Hong stands up at their table. I'm gonna go find this guy some pants now. Brendan nods and smiles. The audience stands. And now, Mark Wahlberg. Mark struts out onto stage and looks out at the audience. He wears a dark blue suit with a matching tie and white shirt. All right, here it is, the final award of the evening. Yep. 
For a cast of a motion picture, throughout the night we revisited these incredible stories and celebrated these iconic performances. And there's so much to be said of all of them, but I think it best speaks for themselves. So here they are, once again, the nominees for cast of a motion picture. Okay, oh, I gotta say the names. Babylon. The Banshees of Sharon. The camera points at each table of casts. Everything, everywhere, all at once. They hold hands and pump their fists. The Fablemans. Michelle and Paul smile. And women are talking. A woman in a red dress waves her arms in the air. And the actor goes to everything, everywhere, all at once. He jumps up and down in the audience. Michelle hugs a man with white hair. And Jamie makes her way to the stage. Key and Austin Butler hug. The cast slowly makes their way onto the stage. <laughs> Stephanie and her girlfriend with short brown hair walk onto the stage. SAG AFTRA members, on behalf of my crew of weirdos, we appreciate your support so much for this beautiful moment, this beautiful film and all of your love and support. Next. Oh, my God. Oh, Stephanie. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> the word ensemble comes from the Latin word for at the same time. Wow, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Key. Uh, okay, it's my turn. Uh, so while we were individually performing, we were also connected and supporting each other as a family, at the same time. <laughs> but there is one of us who has been supporting ensembles for longer than any of us has been alive. He's been acting since there were only... She holds the man, hold, hand of the man who played her father. <laughs> He's been acting since there were only 49 states, and he just turned 94 years young! He waves to the audience. Most of the audience get to their feet. Yeah! Yes! And, and... And... He does a dance on the stage, and the rest of the cast point at him. Wait, wait, wait. And it's been... 69 years in making to get him to this stage. Our patriarch, our friend, our Gong Gong, James Ha! <laughs> Michelle ushers him to the microphone. Hey, hold it. It's... You told him he has 40, 49 seconds, okay? Gok Wai Heng Dai, Gum Yad Chan, the whole fun, eh? Uh, friends, relatives, and friends, so happy that you're all here tonight. <laughs> Actually, I said that because we might be broadcast in Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows, right? Well, we are. We are. We are. Yeah. We are. And I, I hope next year the network will change their mind and put us on again. So I, I got my uh, first car, uh, AG, uh, SAG card in, uh, well, anyway, 70 years ago. <laughs> Two, my first movie was with Clark Gable. Woo! <laughs> but back in those days, I have to tell you this, uh, The Good Earth, the, the leading role was played by these guys with the eyes taped up like this, and they talk like this. And the producer said, the Asians were not good enough, and they are not box office. But look at us now, huh? 
he shakes his fists in the air. Colin Farrell whistles. Uh, actually, we are not all Chinese, but Jamie Lee, Lee's a good Chinese name. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis cracks up. He points at her. She holds up the award. In fact, that's my mother's. Her name was Lei Suiwa, Lee Suiwa. And so, you know, I feel very akin to her. And, uh, and I've never had such a good time as being with these jerks in, uh, in this uh, movie, you know. And these, uh, where's the producer? Ra raise your hand. Uh, there, there he is. <laughs> they point to the audience. That bald guy there. That's China. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, 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 I don't know what they're thinking when they wrote that script. It's, right? Did you understand all of it? <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, go see it a second and third time and maybe you'll understand. <laughs> and they do crazy things like we play a little game before we start the day. You know, that, that's uh, those two Daniel boys, you know. Uh, but of course, he's not Asian, but we, we excuse that. <laughs> All right, so, I, I, so I, I hope I will come back in when I'm 100 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Angela Bassett nods in the audience. But uh, you know, SAG is a wonderful organization. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to tell you this, the, <laughs> when I was a board of uh, director member Charlton Heston was the president. And uh, there was Leon James was one of the members, and he said to me and some other people, he said, it was not long ago when he and about a room full of 30 people said, what are we going to do? And that was the starting of SAG. <laughs> and look at you guys now, all of you and all over America, and some people are even in Europe, who knows? So, <laughs> yeah, you know, huh? Well, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say, because otherwise we'll be kicked off the stage, but if they try, I'll, I'll quote what <laughs> Michelle said, shut up, I can beat you up. He waves. <laughs> Michelle embraces him. He blows kisses to the audience. Thank you for joining us at the 29th Annual SAG Awards. Good night and God bless everyone. Thank you. Mark waves to the audience. United is a proud sponsor of the 29th Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Good leads the way. United. Credits. Live audio description provided by Descriptive Video Works. I'm Aaron Morosky. And I'm Nefertiti Matos Olivares. Directed by Sandra Restrepo. Written by Matt Roberts and Jeanette Tim Vico. Executive producer, John Brockett. Producers, Gloria Fujita O'Brien, Ben Fleischman. Producers for SAG AFTRA, Joe Beth Williams, Daryl Anderson, Jason George, Elizabeth McLaughlin, Woody Schultz. The audience stands and mills about, about the theater. Jenny Slate and Stephanie Shu speak on stage. Michelle Williams hugs Seth Rogen. Adam Sandler puts his arm around Quinta Brunson. Kate Blanchett speaks with Jamie Lee Curtis. Avalon Harbor Entertainment, SAG-AFTRA, copyright 2023 Screen Actors Guild.